So did you have a chance to listen to one of your earlier recordings when we first started? I did. I listened to my very first clearing session today from, you know, when we did after I did class one. And so that was really cool. So you know from I mean? where we started, I think it was about three months ago. Yeah. You which progressed yeah. and finished the 10 weeks training. Where, where do you, where did you perceive yourself when you first started? What got you interested in working with me? And then where do you see yourself mm -hmm. now? So, well, what got me interested is why I knew I would work with somebody one day. I just knew it because I've always had um, things that, you know, I couldn't talk to my parents about. I couldn't talk to my friends about. I did try to do that. And people would, you know, it's true. People would just say, oh, you're just crazy. You know, yeah. I remember talking about my Claire audience, telling stories of my Claire audience to people. And they said, they you know, would say, oh, well, are you sure you're not schizophrenic? You know, things like <laughs> you're that. hearing voices. <laughs> <laughs> and so then you, sh you shut down, you know, you <laughs> shut down and you're like, and you learn not to, not to talk about it so much, but right. I knew at some point it, it, it's not like when you shut down, it just goes away. It's still there. You know, you still, you, you quietly observe it in your life by yourself. Um, but it's a lonely place to be and you don't really know what to do with it. So I knew at some point I would meet somebody and they would help me a little bit with it, you know? So uh -huh. let's, let's go back to where, what you were feeling uh -huh. when you heard, I think you said you heard an interview with me, but what mm -hmm. was going on in your life that you felt like we needed to connect because I don't think it, your psychic abilities or your clear audience was the driving motivation. I can't say that it was anything conscious. It wasn't like a thought process that I had. It was just an intuitive feeling. It was just a draw, a pull towards you. I, I resonated mm -hmm. with you. I resonated with what you were saying. I resonated with your story. Um, it, it wasn't anything that, that was going through my mental processes. It was just something coming out of my heart, I guess. Um, I so connected. let me, let me reflect. I I'm trying to think that I remember you saying I was stuck or you were, you felt stuck. You felt yeah. like you knew there was something else. You didn't know what you were frustrated because you couldn't seem to, get some traction or yeah does that resonate true. with you where yeah, I'm reflecting back to what mm -hmm. I recall because you're a completely different person now mm -hmm. but it seemed like you were anxious frustrated um and maybe even some disappointment with your own life and where you were going yeah I was um I had been stuck for a number of years um I was just in kind of a holding pattern I wasn't living my life so right. it, to the potential that I knew I could live it right um I was so you were just subs you were just surviving and um working I happy I mean it wasn't like I wasn't a happy person right, but I, right, I, I, right. I the potential of Wendy wasn't being um exercised or you mm -hmm. used in the in the way I was living my life and, and where I was I was hiding that's what I was doing. I was hiding from the world. Um, and I knew, and I was a little stuck in that, that sort of like rinse and repeat pattern. And I knew that there was something that had to change. Something had to shift. The energy had to shift. Something inside of me had to shift. And uh, I knew it would happen eventually. I didn't know how it would happen. And, you know, maybe when I saw you that day, I, I just, something connected with you it was like um I, that's hard to describe because that was just more of a force you know pushing me in a direction and me listening and going in that direction and just trusting that it was the right direction and it was the right thing to do um and it was the right thing to do but that's that's a scary leap of faith you know and um but you know, I knew it was the time for me to trust myself. I knew it was the time for me to make that leap because what else was I, was I going to do? Was I just going to stay in that same place forever? No, 
something well, that's, had, that's yeah. the pain point, right? You're fit. You were feeling stuck. But the mm -hmm. other thing you're showing me is that you knew there was something more. You felt stuck and you knew there was something more. So your spirit was pulling. And at mm -hmm. the same time, the pain of being stuck was just getting to be, you know, it's just, I can't take it anymore. I just don't, I can't stand this. Yeah. So there's a tug of war. That's true. Know? That is very true. That is very true. You know, when you're, it's hard. You know, what's funny is it's hard for me to remember. I know that. I know weird. that's, <laughs> I know for, because I'm going, you, I, mean, I do have, remember feeling that way. Hmm? But, but yeah, and, and you were very articulate and you weren't falling apart, but hmm. there was lots of angst frustration I would say that was the biggest thing like mm -hmm. you said it so well is is not living to your potential yeah. and knew there was more but didn't know what that more was and right. or how to get it you didn't you knew you needed some steps or some guidance or some some yeah. steady process to hold you in your tracks and I guess mm -hmm. that was it I was but, ready to shine there was a part of me that was ready to shine mm -hmm. and then there was a part of me that was hiding so it was kind of like a, a juxtaposition you know yeah, yeah. well and we fear uh, what we don't I, know, you know right I, sorry there's a mm -hmm. delay here I think we fear what we don't know and the mm -hmm. uncertainty of not knowing what you're stepping into mm -hmm. um, but yet feeling a burning pit in your stomach like there's more there's more yes yeah definitely definitely knew there was more definitely wanted more didn't quite know how to have it so in terms of what, what are you do seeing concrete, um, concretely different? What is different now? right now? Yeah. Um, gosh, it, everything. Work and maybe your relationships with colleagues at work or with your family. How is that different? That's a huge difference. Um, it, I'm able to stand my ground. I'm able to clear out other people's energy out of my space. I, I, I used to feel like I was constantly being bombarded or attacked from the people that I would interact with at work or whether it was my family or whatever. Um, and that would make me wanna hide even more. So rather than running away from these things, I now have the tools to process the uh, energy as it comes at me and keep out what's not mine and and keep what's what is mine flowing and going and healthy so that I'm stronger and I'm able to deal with what comes at me um so that's huge and there's a I remember you telling me about a story about your sister and a family gathering would you mind oh, sharing that sure um so we were at the, uh, I went to visit some family and we were sitting around the table eating. And my sister and I have a very weird, tumultuous relationship. She's kind of a bulldozer and she bulldozes me quite a bit or she has in the past. Um, so we're sitting around the table and um, she decided to pick on my son, which is what she's done a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and something just came over me. I felt, I felt very, I don't know how to describe it. Phys I felt it physically in my body. I felt very aligned, very centered and calmly looked at her and said, you know, you're wrong. You're wrong and this is why you're wrong. Not with any hatred or any malice or any tension or anything like that just with a peace and a centeredness and a very matter of factness. And um, she was floored, she was floored. She stopped dead in her tracks, she pursed her lips, she backed off and she left the table. And as <laughs> soon as she left the table, everybody, I know it was, it was a victory for me. Everybody else at the table started saying, oh yeah, yeah, you are right. I, these, are, these are my stories. I mean, just backing me up. And, um, you know, so it took her a while to come back to the table, but it was a victory for me because I was able to clearly articulate my point of view and stand up for my. I think that's so fabulous. Congratulations. Dramatic.
Sorry, Thank I you. think we have a delay in our in our network. So, yeah, okay. that's such an incredible example of owning your power and how it translates to everyday life. Because I know that every single person on the planet has some adversary, whether it's family or someone we work with, or you know, somebody is like, you know, sticking a knife in us and turning it. So to be able to transcend that, that's been a lifelong challenge for you mm -hmm. yeah it's huge it's huge and i think you also shared some stories of similar note with your colleagues or at work where you actually stood oh, for yourself in yeah ways. very similar in a way but more on an energetic level um there's a lot of inner and I work remotely, so we're not face to face. Like the interaction with my sister was face to face. So it's we're working remotely, but there's a lot of energetic exchange. Oh yeah, um, in that environment, and that's hard to describe to somebody, but it can be very potent, mm -hmm. and you can walk away from from situations at work, even though you're not face to face, and be exhausted or frustrated or feel defeated. I mean, there's a lot of things, and so at work, I my co-workers can be um a little uh, catty a little uh, i don't know how to show they, they, they'll come at you energetically um and i've dealt with that for a long time um so there were many times at work during this when i started learning the tools and learning how to use them and manage my energy where, where i just put the kibosh on it i said no i'm not doing that i'm not dealing with that and I could tell they energetically felt it because it immediately shut down rather than it continuing on and on throughout the day it stopped dead in its tracks and I got some relief for the first time in a long time because going to work is kind of like a war zone energetic war zone for me or it has been in the past but not so much anymore because I'm in control of my experience more than I have ever been um, so I've learned to allow what I want to allow and to say no to what I don't want. So. And um, so that's fantastic because you're turned, you've turned into a wizard. And I'd like for you to share your manifestation on steroids to like, I think that was the class um, so. final, final exam and your big mock-up that you created. Yeah. So, you know, as much as we're about healing and clearing energetic blocks that interfere with us manifesting what what's in our heart now you it seems like you're delivering up some examples for yourself of manifesting on steroids yeah i've uh, needed to move for a while now um, but i've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because the market now is extraordinarily expensive um and i you know so you have I your long list of reasons <laughs> there were a lot of reasons there were a lot of reasons so putting it off and putting it off until the point where i knew i couldn't put it off anymore and i had to deal with it amira and i worked together and we created a mock-up or i guess i created a mock-up of what i wanted what what I I wanted to experience in the move. Sorry, let me start again. <laughs> it's hard to describe. So um, I think for, for me, the mock-up manifested so quickly and so easily because I believed in it, because I chose it, because I knew what I wanted. Okay, I'm sorry I'm going to interrupt you because I don't think you believed it. But I did. But I think that's why it happened so fast is because after you and I did the mock-up. Okay, but before I, we did the mock-up, I remember saying. Oh, before, yeah, no. But right, after the mock-up. Right. After so, the mock -up. so you, there was a, there's a space of getting completely neutral and completely letting go. And that's when plugging into it and feeling it. That's mm -hmm. where the magic happens. But I remember before you were saying, oh, I haven't started looking for the place and I'm going to look at it in July. And you kept going on with your story. And so when we stopped that and you did the mock-up, within a week you you demonstrated absolutely everything yeah once i, I really um once i really just let go i think i think is what it was i let go and well i mean yeah before the mock-up i had all the excuses in the world i didn't believe it would happen i 
um, was very stressed out and very sad and just feeling stuck and feeling like it's, you know, there's a mountain I have to climb and there's no way I'm going to get over the top of it. And um, then we did the mock-up. And after we did the mock-up, I just let go. And I think that was the biggest thing. Not only did I let go, but I believed in it. And I mean, when I say I believed in it, I would go and feel it every day. And I, I would dance in the joy, literally dance in the joy of having it. I would dance around my house, feeling the bliss of, of that reality. And I wouldn't allow myself to feel anything else but that. And so I think that that's why it happened so quickly is because I just, you know, I would, I, there would be moments where I would, I could hear that doubt voice come in. I said, no, no, we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to stay in this feeling and I'm going to feel the joy of what I want and getting what I want. Yeah. And so anyway, yeah, lo and behold... See. Huh? Yeah, using the tools, you shifted into it miraculously. And it's that quick, it can be like, I mean, it was a matter of days before you got yeah. the approval for your moving. And then I think you told me you're moving in a week. I mean, oh, yeah, it you know, so, yeah, I got everything on my checklist. I mean, it was just like, bam, bam. And it happened really fast. I mean, it was just like one thing after the other after the other it was like, it's like, you want that okay you want that you want that and just checked it off and within a week I, I had manifested the whole thing so what uh, was remarkable about your mock-up is you know we're in a tight markup mar market and you mentioned oh the prices are so high the availability is really low I haven't given my notice my landlord's gonna want you know all of these things these incidentals mm -hmm. and I was shocked when you told me that oh my landlord said don't worry about it leave mm -hmm. when you can leave and I'm not going to charge yeah. you extra and then yeah. you didn't need to put first and second down for your rent it's just the first and a deposit so mm -hmm. your financial needs were met your time oh. restrictions were met and the support was met what mm -hmm. else is there oh gosh um well I, I i mean that's that's pretty much it i i i got the place i wanted it 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 was in the area I wanted it, it was in the price range that I wanted it. Um, the amount of deposit that I had I decided I, I could afford it, that was what it required. Uh, the movers were very easy. I lined those up immediately. I mean, it just, uh, what else? Oh, right. um, and landlord, it was available. The place was available and it had been sitting there for a week. And then I mean, like it was waiting. Is, yeah, this place is remarkable. It's, it's stunning. I, and in this market, I don't know why it was still sitting there. That's why I was like, because I I know the area and I know what this is and and at that price point I was like why is this still sitting there it doesn't make any sense but you know what was interesting because it's a miracle for Wendy that's why. I think so but you know what was weird after I I was the they said I called the lady and I said you know, because I, I, I put the application and then I called to check in the very next morning once their office opened. And she said, you know, we, we come on, we work on a first come first serve basis because that's what we have to do. Um, and you have to create a rule and stick to it. That's our philosophy. And, and she said, so, and I said, well, is there anyone else in line? And she said, uh, let me check for you. And she came back and she's like, no, you, you know, if you can get this last little thing that we need in, you will be the first applicant. And I thought, how is that even possible? It's been sitting on the market for 11 days. And so I, I got off the phone, I got that last thing in, and then I let it go. I let it go. I didn't think about it. I didn't obsess about it. I just let it go. And I said, if it's mine, it's mine. I came, I, you know, maybe four days later, I called again, or I emailed, I think I emailed to check in just for a status update, because I hadn't heard anything. And she said, Oh, we, we've got a bunch of applications. And let me I'm, we're going through those, I'll get back to you. And I thought, well, that's weird. I was the first applicant on a house that should have been gone already had been sitting for 11 days. After I applied and secured the number one spot, then everybody else started applying. And so what it told me was it was waiting for me. Mm -hmm. It was in, it was being held for me. I mean, you know, 
that's how it felt. No, it's fantastic. I, I really want to congratulate you. You know, you've done phenomenal work in Mm -hmm. manifesting in shifting, raising your vibration so that these things can come into you and you've just begun, you know, even when I often say, when you finish the 10 weeks, you're still in the incubation, you know, all of these amazing things are going to keep unfolding. Yeah. So it's really, really remarkable. What would you say to anybody that's thinking of taking this training or mm-hmm. working with me? Go for it. Do it. Do it. Do I, you know, we're all going to have doubts. There's all, always going to be, oh, well, but this, but this, but this, but this. But if when I look at where I, where I was when I started and where I am now, I mean, it's just, I'm a different person. I mean, that's how it feels. I feel yeah. like I st- I'm finally come out of my shell I'm finally being the authentic me for the first time maybe even ever without fear and with confidence and you can't put a price point on something like that you know you you just can't it's worth it do it you know it's a gift to you it's a it's a gift to you that just keeps on giving and will be with you your entire life and how many things in this world can you buy that you can say that about? No, nothing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so if anybody's on the fence or even considering it, I say, do it. I mean, I did and I'm glad I did. So. Well, and I appreciate you even speaking with me today on Zoom because you mentioned how before you would never, ever do a Zoom interview or something like this. So <laughs> you're really stepping out of your shadow and, and, and boldly claiming all of your amazingness. So I really, really appreciate it. And oh, yeah. I, I'm so honored that you asked. And yeah, this is out of my comfort zone for sure. Um, but I'm glad to do it. I, I hope that somebody else hears this because, you know, when I was considering it, I went to your website and there you had an interview with a previous student and I watched that interview and that's what changed my mind that or not changed my mind, but that's what, that was the straw that that's what helped me make the final decision to do it. I think it was, his name was Amir. What was his name? Manju. It doesn't matter. Manju. Huh? Yes, I think. Okay. But anyway, it was his interview. And after I saw that, it was just like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Manju's an angel. That's for sure. So if I can help somebody else make that decision. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to me because we are so bombarded with so much noise out there. It's hard to discern, you know, uh, the right path to take. And, um, on the person to work with. So only yeah. if, you know, the energies are right, then we can come together. But I truly appreciate you, Wendy. You are an ex- amazing, powerful example of in three short months, how you can truly transform your experience of life. And I mean, like I said, you're just beginning, girlfriend. <laughs> go. I'm excited. <laughs> it's really fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, Wendy. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.